All right, uh, this is just uh, more, more videos following up on the 502. Uh, today I just wanna do a more of a theory on timing. Uh, some of the stuff I've discovered on the, the 502 and what they say to set the timing at, and what the reality of it is. Now, keep in mind this car is just put together. Uh, we're still dialing in some of the stuff. It doesn't even have exhaust on it. I've, I'm getting ready to build an entire uh, big exhaust system for this car, uh, waiting on some parts to come in. So all we have is uh, intermediate headers with pieces on them to uh, dump down right now. So it's open exhaust. So we're not really fine tuning it, but we're getting the basics down. And one of the things I discovered is uh, some of the instructions on the ZZ502, they talk about distributor initial timing. And usually it's about eight to 10 on a big block is where you sit initial. When you say initial, that's your vacuum advance off. Oh, say 800, 900 RPMs. And that's where you want to set it. And with uh, this HEI that comes with the big block, with the 502, it has a pretty quick curve that comes in, oh, right about 2000 RPMs, a little bit before. And it, so if you set it roughly around eight to 10, you're gonna get about 32 to 34 degrees, and you can raise it up some. Now, the big question is the vacuum advance. So these guys put this vacuum advance unit on there and their instruction says, leave it unplugged. Well, what the hell is that for? You know, what are they thinking here? So I went ahead and plugged it in and I looked at it and I didn't look up the model number when I uh, did it because I assumed they were smart enough to use a 10 degree vacuum pot on a big block high performance distributor. Oh no, they're not. So it's a 20 degree pot distributor and that uh, part number that comes on that distributor is actually this one right here. This is the one out of the uh, ZZ502 distributor. I put it back in this distributor here. So it is a 69120, and you can see it has a big slide gap right there. And so when you put this thing under vacuum, it raises the timing 20 degrees. So for example, if you set your, your, your timing at 10 degrees, you're gonna have 30 degrees of timing sitting there at idle. Now that's not a bad deal, but the problem you got now is whenever you drop vacuum, which on a motor like this is already borderline on its vacuum on an automatic and all the other junk that's on this thing, you immediately reduce the timing way down. Whoa, and so you get a bog effect and you're gonna run into that all the time. And so in order to compensate for that, well, there's two, two things you can do is one, unplug the thing and just let the thing lope all the time, blah, 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 blah. And that sounds great, but it's just not really the way you wanna do it. Or you can modify this vacuum advance. Now, what I did was I went and I had another one out of this distributor here. And that part number that I had uh, is a 48512. And that's a 15 degree advance. It's actually W, it's an Oldsmobile, uh, distributor part, which is HEI, goes in the same thing. So that was a 15 degree, degree versus a 20 degree, which this one is here. But I also took a piece of a vacuum hose and you, when you pop this thing out, all you have is this, this metal rod sticking up right here. And so down in there, I put a piece of vacuum hose, which will limit the travel. So basically on the unit that I have in the 502 right now, it's a little under 10 degrees with that vacuum hose. Let's just say about eight and a half, maybe or something like that, which is much, much wiser. And that gives you the, you know, the use of a vacuum advance when you're, when you're cruising and you're idle. So you'll, you'll raise your timing up some without having to, to, to just jump around. And then when you accelerate that loses all vacuum, this drop backs and retards the timing and you just fall on your face or get that, that, that lag and always having to, if you don't use it, just da, 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 da. Now, the weird thing about, uh, you know, I'm probably preaching to the choir on, on real hot rodders that have been around uh, big blocks and racing and all the time, but I'm trying to do a compensation of middle ground here of having streetability and still a hot rod motor. And like everyone's like, all the hot rodders are gonna say, just dump the vacuum advance. Well, that's, you know, just, put front runners on your car, take the sway bars off and throw the air conditioning compressor away too. You, it's not a car anymore at that point. So we're, we're getting away from that, trying to make this thing work in all forms of life. Uh, and it's doing it now. So that was the better thing. I can't believe that they actually put that, that deal in there. 
So if you have a ZZ502, basically you probably just wanna take the, the vacuum advance here and put the tubing on it. You're gonna reduce it down at least five to eight degrees, maybe a little bit more, and that's gonna be better. Or you can get that part number right here and that will drop it down to a 15 degree and then you can still add the, the tube to it. And their Excel makes adjustable ones of these. And they have a screw in them that actually takes the vacuum. And then they have uh, bushings that can go on here and limit your, uh, your deal too. So if I didn't have this one already, I just would have bought the Excel one and, and utilized that. But I had this distributor here that already had that part number in it. And this was from a, from a hot motor before. So uh, that worked out and that'll help. Now here's the theory of timing that a lot of people may or may not understand. So here you got this motor here, basically, lack of better term, just another big block, but this is a 540 all aluminum square port motor. So this is a really hot engine in this car. Now what this distributor here is, and when I, and, and when I got it, I was real skeptical of it. That is a MSD billet E-curve distributor. So it's set with dip switches and the combination of things you can do with it are amazing. Now, what I've learned utilizing this is it has something, you know, called a start retard. A lot of MSD distributors have that. So you can set this, the, the start when the motor is turning over to retard the timing from where it's set at now to way back. Well, the initial idea of advance in a distributor comes from way back when because if you had your timing set at a certain point where the motor ran really good, when you go hit the starter, it's just gonna drag. It's gonna go and you're not gonna start it. So you had to retard the timing to start it. Well, the E-curve takes that right out of it. And a lot of other MSD distributors and, and boxes can do that too. And newer cars also have that built into their systems. You know, LS motors will retard the timing on startup the whole bit. So what this distributor is, what we call, we run it in a locked position. So we're running at 36 degrees total timing. So once it goes off the start mode, which gets it into the you know, five, 600 RPM range, bam, it runs at 36 degrees. All the advance is in at idle, all the advance is in at top speed and that motor runs great that way. And a lot of people have heard of locked timing and man, I, you know, that's, that's the key. That's the answer, especially on big blocks. They really run good with locked timing. However, this distributor has another neat, neat, neat uh, piece to it. And if you see it right here, it has a vacuum hose at the bottom of it. It has a vacuum sensor in there that electronically utilizes vacuum to simulate vacuum advance. And so within the dip switches, you can set it to a 10 degree, 15 degree, 20 degree. I think you may even go higher on that on the vacuum advance. So I have it set to 10 degree and it'll advance at 10 degree. And that really works because it just, it, it balances the whole thing out really good. So that's basically what we're trying to do on this distributor. So you got these mechanical weights and those mechanical weights are just there. So when the engine is stopped, that your advance comes in and you can still start it. And so you don't drag start it. So you can lock these kind of distributors too, but you've got no start retard and you're just gonna drag start. So running an HEI or, or a standard old uh, points type distributor or anything like that, or something with a, with a Unilite or a uh, Pertronics in it uh, converted, that's kind of the setup you wanna run. You wanna probably get all your timing in about 2000 on the weights. And where you go with that is, you know, these big blocks, I think you can run these things up in the 40 degree range, full, full, thing, full up there. Uh, like I said, that one's running 36 to 38 right there. And that's higher compression square port engine. This one's running, this is a lower compression and it has, um, um, you know, oval port heads, the high flow oval port heads. And uh, so we're, we're basically having to use the weights just so you can start the motor. But GM performance, whoever the brainchild behind that, throwing that 20 degree pot in there and then giving you instructions to leave it unhooked you know, I, maybe they were just, okay, you'll figure out your application and, and, and work it yourself if you're smart enough. And that's basically what you need to do. So big blocks in general, if you look back at a big block Corvette, they have 10 degree pots on the standard ignitions. So that's the theory. Go with about a 10 degree total advance on vacuum. Use it, use it to your advantage. You'll like it. Um, don't leave it unhooked. 
And then uh, I, the weights that come on the, the GM Performance HEI that come with the 502 are fine. And you can set your initial, I bet you can set your initial somewhere between 10 and 12 even on this motor and still get away with it and run run good and, and probably have just in, an insane throttle response and quickness. Um, I'm not doing it yet because frankly, I can't hear the engine because of the exhaust. But uh, other big blocks that I've, I've done over the years, that's kind of what works really, really good. So, because uh, so, I've built a lot of uh, oval port 454s, uh, you know, cammed up, higher compression, and we're kind of going with the same theory of that, and that's kind of what this motor is too, even though it's a 502, but still the same same deal. Uh, so that's kind of it, and we'll see how this all goes. So that's kind of the engine finish out if you're kind of looking, following these videos on these car, this car. Um, and to top it all off, I've got this, which is your Holly drop base air cleaner and so if you have a Chevelle or any kind of GMA body with a stock hood and a ZZ502 or any of these basically like a that's kind of an Edelbach performer intake is really what it is on a on an oval port big block and a Holly uh, 4150 base so this is how this works goes right on there all fit and i did have to do a few things to some of the brackets that i built for the cruise control and things on this motor but works perfect trying to pick the lid up off the floor and not getting fingerprints all over it not doing a good job and you can stick the lid on it here i do it with one hand and there's your stock original GM wing nut, which if you put that on eBay on a 67 Corvette, somebody will say uh, $500 and give you for it. Original, well, they're all the same, it's a joke. Um, so that's kind of the general finish out. There's still a few things, uh, touch-ups we need to do under the hood here. But you can see over here we have, oh yeah, I added the, uh, I meant to mention that there's the uh, air conditioning kick up solenoid. I've got all that adjusted out. We did that yesterday. Now that's nice to have, and especially on a motor that's limited on vacuum and things like that. It kicks the idle up nice when the air conditioning gets kicked on. Um, here's your you know cruise control brackets that we've built into the. I guess I took the quarter jet. Um, carburetor linkage and actually cut it up and made it like the holly mount so that took some doing but that was the only way i could get the cruise all in there kind of factory looking and i hadn't even tested the cruise yet so i i'm assuming it's going to work vacuum is good it's pulling the you see it's pulling the throttle there so we, we have some vacuum play there and that's kind of it Got this right here, which is supposed to clip. It did clip on the small block fan shroud, but it's not. So I'm probably gonna have to stick a uh, little hole in here or something to get that to clip. The big block car, I don't remember if it had a screw there or not. But anyway, that's one of the little finish out things I gotta research. But we have all this down here, the way it's supposed to be with the Bat or negative battery cable than your your clamp for your low pressure air condition hose there. And so the air condition's all charged up working right now. And there's your uh, DeWitt's radiator. I said that's an awesome piece. Really, really impressed with their work. So you it's expensive, but you get what you pay for. And so far, this motor barely heats up. I mean, it's just, it is hot outside right now. We've been idling this thing, staying right on the thermostat, bouncing on and off, so 160. 
see what it does when it gets on the road. It's been on the road, but not really any testing. Open exhaust. <laughs> but I'll do a whole video of the build out when some of the, uh, the pipe comes in, as we're having the tailpipes built. And that's another thing I'll touch on later, because if you run a 6872 car and there's a lot of exhaust systems. Oh yeah, forgot, there we go. How's that? 502, that's a 502 metal emblem we got there. They came in these nice little GM boxes, wherever those went. GM licensed product. So, and those are in the factory position for the big block El Camino Chevelles. But back on the exhaust is, you know, if you have a 70, 68, 72, and you look online and you have like a Flowmaster uh, American Thunder kit, and they say they worked for all these years, don't believe it because back in the back, the 73 to 77 cars, the rear, um, not ladder bars, but uh, tor uh, control arms are different. And the, the framing on the car is a little different. They strengthen these cars up quite a bit over your 68 to 72. Of course, you know, they went to the, the colonnade tops for the rollover requirements and things, but they also made these a whole lot beefier in the back. So those Flowmaster kits, those Magnaflow kits, those exhaust pipes don't work they'll hit everything back there. So I'm having a guy that built a lot of these 77, or uh, 73, 77 built some custom tailpipes for this thing, which are gonna be side exits. And then we'll use an X pipe up front with a crossover, and then probably just gonna use some Flowmaster mufflers on it, and then connect into the tailpipes I'm having built. So I'm kind of waiting on that. And so that's kind of it. That's going to take a little while. But that's the update on the car. Thanks for watching.